Hello, uh, extension mathematicians. I just thought I'd do a little video to say goodbye before the summer. Um, and I thought I'd do a little question, a tough question this morning. And I'm trying to nudge you towards here as well, where you can find really good questions for like uh, practicing for these devilishly difficult extension papers. I think one of the best places, uh, certainly it's a place which I've been starting to look at uh, a lot more recently, is the, uh, the British Mathematical Olympiad, the BMO. Now you can find that um, easily if you Google it um you know I, I, where, where was the one i was looking at here i've just googled it it's on uh, this page what i love about it though is if you pick any paper from 2005 i think onwards you will find video solutions with some very intelligent people people much smarter than me going through these questions and they're all you know uh, graduate mathematicians they're all like research mathematicians and they go through all of them so that's what's really nice about it obviously always have a really good go at the question first on your own but um, the reason why i think it's a great place to find you know tough questions to practice for things like the oxford mat or the step or the tamua is because the kind of mathematicians you're going to be up against when you take those papers are absolutely going to be the ones who are likely to be in the BMO. The BMO is what you can get into if you do well enough well enough on a senior maths challenge. Essentially, it's the top 1,300 mathematicians in the UK which sit the BMO from the maths challenge. So you get a high enough score in the senior maths challenge, you get through to the BMO. So it's a great place to source questions for, uh, you know, for this kind of uh, mathematics. And the nice thing is, actually, they seem to avoid uh, using any kind of calculus or anything like that, or any... Or much stuff you get from a level it always seems to be like uh, kind of basic techniques anyway so I've just um, you know I completely picked this paper at random you normally find that the first question on the first round is perhaps a little bit more doable than the last question <laughs> um, so that's uh, you know that that's kind of a, a feature of the test but let's have a look at this first one so I, I literally just had a go at this one a second ago I check my answer by looking at the video afterwards and realized yeah they're going to use the flash way of working out the last bit which I definitely didn't do uh, <laughs> but um but yeah it's it's interesting to see so this this I hope will encourage you you see something like this find four prime numbers less than 100 which are factors of that now that's a massive number that's the first thing I'll say 3 to the power of 32 is big is really big and 2 to the power 32 is obviously very very big powers go up very very quickly so you know calculation no I'm, I'm not going anywhere near calculating that that's 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 crazy big but what it is crying out for here is difference of two squares I mean look at this we've got a square and a square and it's a difference so surely difference of two squares will help us in some way so I, I started off and I thought, OK, the square root of 3 to the 32 is 3 to the 16 because it would be 3 to the 32 to the power of a half, which you multiply the powers together. Um, uh, that minus that and then 3 to the 16 plus 2 to the 16. I thought, well, that number's still very big and it's difference of two squares. So I might as well go again, you know, it's kind of like a, like any mathematician, you kind of appreciate the pattern. It's like, oh, it's quite, quite a fun pattern to it. 3 to the 8 plus 2 to the 8. 3 to the 16 plus 2 to the 16. Sorry about my handwriting on here. It's never very good when I do it on the white online whiteboard. Um, and I thought I'd do it again. I thought, well, this is definitely going places. Uh, you know, I can do this because I've got a power of 2 as a power. I can keep going. <laughs> 3 to the uh, 4 plus 2 to the 4. Um, 3 to the 8. Now, in my working out, you'll see, like, uh, just like all you lazy people out there, I started going dot, dot, dot at the end of this, but it's useful if I write it down just for the last bit. Uh, okay, so we're going up to 2 to the 16. Um, we'll give ourselves a bit more space by going over here. So we've got 3 squared minus 2 squared, uh, 3 to the 4, uh, 3 squared plus 2 squared, sorry. And then we've got the rest, 3 to the 4, but um, plus two to the four, three to the six, eight plus two to the eight, and three to the sixteen plus two to the sixteen. So okay, we get this lovely little sequence, yeah. And I hope as well you're giving this a go. Please do pause my videos if you haven't done this question already. Always have a go. I'll tell you, I'll probably will mention this in a write-up actually, but always have a go at a question before you look at the answer. Have a really good stab at it because you learn a lot from it. And I even went one step further, which at the end struck me as a little bit silly, but um, I even went, okay, 3 to the power of 1 minus 2 to the power of 1, 3 to the power of 1 plus 2 to the power of 1. <laughs> 
uh, and then 3 squared plus 2 squared, 3 to the 4 plus 2 to the 4. You get the general picture. I'll just write down this last line of working and 3 to the 16 plus 2 to the 16. Lovely. So I was pretty happy with myself because at least I made a pretty pattern. But also I've got it factorized. I need factors, don't I? I need prime factors. Like um, if it's factors of that, it's got to be a prime factor. Um, why won't my board move? Oh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. OK, so I'm down to here um, and I start working these out. I think one. Damn, not a prime number, not since the Middle Ages anyway, so no dice. Ah, but five, five's prime. So I found my first quarter of the answer, if you like. I got quite excited then. I was like, oh, yeah, hey, this, this isn't too bad. This is quite easy. Nine plus four, 13. Oh, happy days. You know, look at this. And then I was like, OK, let's check this next one's prime. Three to the four. Uh, that's 81, 2 to the 4, that's 16, 97. Uh, yeah, you know, you might do a little bit of checking out there, but, um, you know, you might try dividing it by 13 or something like that, or 7. You know, um, it's pretty obviously not divisible by 11 or 5 or 3 uh, because the digits don't sum to um, a multiple of 3 there. That's why I know it's not uh, divided by 3. But you'll soon realise it's definitely prime. Now, this is typical of a BMO question. You know, it can't be that easy. You've got three of the numbers, but you haven't got the fourth one. And so you get all pleased about yourself, and then you realise, yeah, but I've done the easier bit of the question, not the harder bit. Um, and you're left with this. And, you, you know, you, you get that, you know, familiar kind of feeling of, you know, failure and you know, a disappointment that you get sometimes in life. And, uh, you know, you, you sort of like toy around with what you might do. This was definitely a bit where I, you know, um, hit a little bit of a, you know, of a roadblock. But you think about it, yeah, we've got it factorised. Remember, this is 3 to the 32 minus 2 to the 32. We've got it factorised. So we've got three of the factors. Now, obviously, our last remaining prime factor can't be a factor of any of these because they're all prime. So a last remaining prime factor less than 100 must be either a factor of this one or a factor of this one. Now, my approach was to think, well, actually, is that first one that big a number? And I thought, well, it's quite big. The 3 to the 8, I'm not too tempted to look at. But the 2 to the 8, well, I've always done powers of 2 on my fingers. So 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 1, 2, 8, 2, 5, 6. I'm now holding up 8 fingers. So this is 256. Yeah? I thought, well, that's not too bad. 3 to the 8. Well, that's a little bit worse because it's like, I suppose it's like 3 to the 4 times 3 to the 4, isn't it? And that's 81 times 81. Um, let me think about it, this. Um, so that'd be 80 times 80, which is 6,400, plus uh, like 2 times 80, which is 160, plus 1. And so that is going to be 6561. Yeah, that, I'm just doing a weird way. I like to do um, long multiplication in my head. Do it any way you like. Um, I'm doing it essentially like grid. I'm just imagining it as 80 plus 1 times 80 plus 1. But yeah, whichever way you prefer to do long multiplication. Um, OK, so I thought, well, I can at least add that together and find out what number it is. So 6561 plus 256. We're going to get 7, 11, 8, 6. Um, let me just check I've done that right. 6, 8, 1, 7. Yeah, I think that's right. So, OK, so we know this is actually 6,817. Yeah. And my next thought was, well, if I can find a prime factor in there, that's that's job done. Yeah, because this is just a factorized product. So I just need to find a factor now of 6817. I felt a bit more confident doing that. Now, I've got to be honest, first thing I did was I looked at it added up the digits to see if it was uh, divisible by three and 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 it and it wasn't because <laughs> it's 14 15 22 that's not a multiple of three so it's not divisible by three that trick trick only works for threes and nines but it's a really useful trick also before i did this i did actually look at the end of the number on three to the eight and two to the eight and i decided that three to the eight ended in a one which indeed it does um and then i suddenly sort of started thinking well hang on if i've got a multiple of three and i add a power of two to it can that ever be a multiple of three no it can't um and this is really the approach the video takes it like takes a modular arithmetic approach and you might need to essentially uh, learn a bit of a uh, fresh maths to do that approach so 
you know that might you might not be so keen on that but it's good to learn modular arithmetic because it's number theory and it does come up i believe in the olympiad a lot um so yeah look into uh, perhaps modular arithmetic maybe i'll do a video on it but um anyway i didn't use that i, I used this approach i looked at six eight one seven i thought i try three no no need to try five we've already got five covered seven i tried so i was like six eight one seven um you know and i just did the long division the, you know the 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 difficult way uh sevens into 51 goes seven times made two seven oh no that's not gonna work no and then i was like well um 11 i think i did try 11 don't need to try 13 yeah i did try 11 um so 11's uh, i guess six time around two 11's into 21 goes one time remained at 10 11's into 107 no it doesn't actually because you got 99 at you know just before you get to 107 so that's a no and then I was like, well, OK, 13 I've already got, so I don't need to try that. 17. And as soon as I wrote it down, I thought, hang on a second. I don't even need to do this because 17 goes into 6,800 because 17 times 4 is 68. <laughs> yeah. And so as soon as I wrote it down, I thought, hang on a second, hang on a second. This is this is where we go for hundred and one you know like uh you know it's it's done it's done and we've got our fourth prime number and it's 17 yay we found four prime numbers let's put them in a different color four prime numbers which are divisible uh which divide into that figure nicely um, okay, so that was just a little uh, example question. Um, I will promise you that they get harder than that in round one. You know, the, the last question, I think, tends to be very difficult. The first question tends to be the easier one. But you might find question two or question three easier. It is very much about personal taste as well. Um, yeah, so there we go. That's that question done. Um, it didn't take me quite as quick as that when I was doing it. I probably spent um, sort of like uh, the time it took me to explain this, plus about seven or eight minutes in the middle faffing about here on the, this trying to look at how i could find prime, prime factors of those two um but yeah so don't you know don't get too distracted i forget how much time they get on these papers i think it's uh let's have a look um uh oh, oh hang on. can i yeah there we go uh you get about three and a half hours yeah quite a long time like uh what is that 30 minutes uh question basically yeah 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 30 minutes a question plus plus 30 minutes uh, to you know write up your solutions I suppose and stuff like that but it, it's it's they're not supposed to be quick they're designed to be very difficult obviously because after round one you just get the second round and the second round is really the final round because they they whittle it down from 1300 students to about a hundred students nationally uh, to do round two and then from round two they pick the British team uh, so it is you know just to get to the BMO round one is a heck of an achievement it really is um, and yeah you know a lot of people studying at the top university studying mathematics you will meet students if you're in in those universities who have certainly taken part in this round and perhaps the round afterwards so great place to find some difficult maths questions okay hope you enjoyed the video summer is the time to practice all these things don't think of it as work personally i think it's you know a great bit of fun this is uh definitely the highlight of my working day working through an olympiad question okay cool um excellent uh get in touch as well any questions any problems any you know really solutions you're really proud of send them to me i'm going to be available all over the summer i'll be checking my email every day send them to me and uh, even do a video solution if you want maybe you will become a youtube influencer like i have become Okay, bye-bye.